Today, I'm gonna tell you about five dining mistakes that you should never make on your next cruise. And to make things a bit more challenging, I'm gonna try to do it in less than five minutes. Remember, if you enjoy this content, subscribe. Let's put the timer on and get started. So first let's talk about premium dining and your drink packages. That's something that you should be doing in your cruise planner before you get into the actual cruise itself. Remember, anything that you wanna get, whether you wanna go to a paid restaurant or you wanna get a drink package, whether it's actual alcohol or regular package, all of that stuff is going to cost a lot less money if you buy it before you get to on your cruise. So when you have access to your cruise planner, you can go to the dining and the drink package section you could take a look over there and most of the time there's going to be a discount usually like seven to fifteen percent if you buy things before you get on the ship it will never be cheaper it will never go on sale when you get on the actual ship itself most of the time you'll save the most money if you get it early in your cruise planner so a paid restaurant is going to be a lot cheaper if you buy it before now if you're going to go to multiple paid restaurants if you want to try all of the premium dining options it's important to of course get a dining package which will combine multiple dining options together and will save you even more money now buying the alcoholic all you can drink packages is a great idea if you're doing a lot of drinking but if you're going to be out out, you know all day adventuring when your ship is in port you might not be utilizing those packages a lot right so if you have a lot of ports on your itinerary it may be a good idea to pay per drink versus getting the package now I know it can be really confusing you know versus paying for the drink itself or getting the all you can drink package there's actually a website that you can use which will help you calculate this I will put the link to this website in the description of the video make sure to check it out but otherwise just consider what you want to do now the non-alcoholic drink packages are a great idea if you plan on like I said drinking right they have freshly squeezed juices that are included a lot of the times premium coffees and teas and the premium water is also included in those drink packages so like I said you might want to consider even the non-alcoholic drink packages because they're usually worth the money so next, plan your dinner times around cruise ports and entertainment. It's really important and it's a very good idea in my opinion to pick a specific time to go to dinner every night, right? And it might be different depending on what night, but usually what you wanna do is at least book out all of the reservations that you have, especially in those paid restaurants, as early as you possibly can. Remember, paid restaurants get sold out typically towards the end of your cruise. During preferred times and during sea days, it's also very difficult to get reservations. Also, if you have a large party, you definitely wanna make sure that you make your bookings early. So at minimum, when you get to the ship, you wanna to go to any maitre d' at any restaurant and ask them to book out your reservations, have a list ready of your preferred times, and hopefully you have that stuff already mapped out. So for example, if you get to a cruise port and the ship leaves at 5 p.m., right, everyone is gonna to try to go to dinner around 10 or 6 because that's when they're gonna get back onto the ship. So it's quite important if you're gonna do that, have a reservation ready so you can get in and eat when you want versus having to wait and possibly have to get in at eight or even later. Now a few more pointers, remember dinners on cruises take a little bit longer, so plan ahead. And the tips are always included in your drink and food packages. So I mean, you can tip extra if you wanted to, but it's not expected at all because when you buy a package, that tips are always included in that package. Now, if you're not gonna get a package, a good thing to do would be to take advantage of the allowed limits of alcohol and water that you can bring on board with you before the cruise. You can always check with the cruise line themselves, but there's always a limit to the amount of water or wine or even hard liquor that you could possibly bring with you on board. Remember the main dining room serves three meals per day. Breakfast is usually better at the buffet. Unless you wanna, you know, table side, usually the buffet has a lot more options and flexibility now lunch on the contrary is much better in my opinion in the main dining room it's always just on sea days and usually just for a few hours it's a special menu and it's something that you normally do not want to miss lunch on sea days in the main dining rooms is usually very good and you want to make sure you get there the same thing goes for dinner especially on formal nights Specifically, the last formal night usually has a lobster, you know, prime rib, beef wellingtons, baked Alaskas, all the top end food menu is usually saved for that last formal night to impress you. So it's important for you to go to the main dining room uh, for that last formal night. 
Now, while you're at dinner, it's really important for you to not be shy and try as many things as you possibly want. If you think that you would like to try more than one thing, or you want to try several different appetizers, or you want to split something in the middle, it's really okay to just order as many things as you like. You paid for the cruise. Obviously, don't be wasteful, but try everything you want and do not be shy. Now, certain things on the cruise will cost extra. Like for example, a, a first lobster tail is free, but nowadays a lot of the other cruise lines will charge you extra charge if you wanted to get a second lobster tail. So sometimes it's a good idea to combine a steak and a lobster together, right? Or maybe if someone on the table is not gonna have a lobster tail, have theirs because that will be free. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but the idea is you definitely wanna make sure that you order multiple things so you try everything. And last two tips for you. If you do end up getting your drink packages, remember the premium upgrade for a drink package always has top shelf liquor included in it. But that's not something that your bartender is going to give to you by default. So for example, if you have a premium drink package that includes top shelf liquor and you go and you order something, you definitely need to tell them that. You need to tell them that you want a top shelf brand in your liquor, even if you have the package. Now, last pro tip for you, it's really important, in my opinion, to bring water back to your room, right? When you get to the room, ask your attendant to clear out your refrigerator of all of those drinks that cost extra to make room for your water bottles or whatever drinks that you want. And every time you walk by a bar or somewhere that has that, if you have the unlimited drink package, then you grab a water, bring it back to the room with you and put it into the fridge. This way, at 1 a.m. in the morning, if you're thirsty, you're not gonna be running around looking for water, or worse, paying for the premium water that's in the room that does cost extra, even if you have the drink package. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up all of the dining mistakes that I try to never make on my cruise. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.